Welcome everyone to the Portage County Safety Council. We're uh, recording today a special podcast with the Portage Parks District to talk about all the benefits related to uh, being outdoors and all the great amenities that are here in Portage County to help encourage both you and your employee, employees to get outside and enjoy this great weather that is about to descend upon Ohio as we enter into spring. I'm joined today with Mike Thompson, the manager of Portage County Safety Council. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Andrea and Jennifer, both from the Portage Parks District. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. So, so we're really excited to uh, do this podcast and this webinar uh, for our members and just anybody in Portage County to talk about the Parks District. Uh, I know for me, getting out, uh, especially during COVID and over the past year, has been really beneficial for me. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, a little side note uh, for myself, over the past year, I've lost over 80 pounds just by hiking the trails and changing my eating habits. So thank you to Portage Parks District for uh, being a big part of that. And I'm really excited to share and hear what you have to share for all of our residents here in Portage County. No way, 80 pounds? So, um, See, yeah, thank you, I'm Portage down 80 Parks. pounds since the last year. You guys See, are saving lives. It's all because we started the hiking challenge. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, my, my kids and I, we go out every weekend and we hike the different trails here in Portage County and Summit County. It's been a great fun activity and it's just gives us something to look forward to. And uh, in fact, we're even willing to take it to the next step. We've booked a weekend getaway down in Hocking Hills to uh, nice. challenge those trails nice. this year. So, so we're definitely excited for that. Nick, I do want to throw in there and say that I, I did the math. There's, I, my wife and I identified at least 12 parks 12 parks or trails, major trails, not including the small trails off those, you know, like, you know, the hike and bike trail and all that stuff, but 12 major parks and trails within less than a 15 minute drive of our house in Shadowsville. And most of those are Portage parks. So that's why we get so excited about this because we've had these treasures, you know, I've lived here my entire life in Portage County and maybe I, I did the uh, Headwaters Trail one time when I lived in Garrettsville and different things, but there was, I've very, had any, little to no experience with any of these things, let alone know they exist. And if I did, I saw a sign and didn't think much about it. In the last couple of years, they've created so many new parks. Morgan Park a year and a half ago, Trail Lake just opened up in the fall and it keeps growing. So some really cool things. So I'm real excited about today. So Andrea and Jennifer, take it away. Well, thank you for having us first of all we're really happy to partner with you all um, it's good information it's information for all of portage county and beyond um, it's really helpful to the individual as well as the family um, nick congratulations um, that's awesome i'm glad that we could be any part of that motivation that's that's just really great uh, so a little bit about sort of what got us into, obviously we enjoy the outdoors. We think it's important um, that comes along with working at the parks, but uh, there's a program called Park RX and that is a prescription for nature. And folks have probably heard a little bit about that. Um, often it is coupled with a doctor's office or a clinic uh, giving you a prescription and telling you get out in the parks or get outside and spend some time in nature, whether it's in your own neighborhood or beyond. So when I started at the park district, we were going to start that program. And my thought process was, that's great, but how many people are motivated to actually go do that once you get that slip from the doctor's office? You know, it's really hard to do that next step, which is, you know, no one's making you do it. Nobody's at your house asking you like, hey, let's go, let's get outside, let's do this thing. Um, so I thought it was really important to couple that idea with programming and really engaging folks and giving them ideas and opportunity. So that's what we're all about. Our Park RX is similar in nature, but we really expanded to offer opportunity and give folks the ability um, to really enjoy the parks without having to think too hard. Because um, sometimes that's just that extra step is a little tough. So um, Get Outside is a partnership with the Portage County Safety Council, and it's where we talk about how much you want to get outside, the mental and physical health benefits of getting outside, and what it takes. So when I say what does it take, um, you'll see us saying Get Outside 120, 
which is 120 minutes a week. And studies are showing that that is um, that cusp that you wanna meet each week in any way you want to. It could be 10 minutes a day. It could be a couple hour hike on the weekend. However that looks to you in your daily life, that's okay. Um, but that studies are showing that when you hit that mark and higher, you're seeing mental and physical health benefits. So, you know, uh, Mike and I were, we were all talking um, kind of ahead of this webinar and like, what benefits are we talking about? But we're talking about heart health. We're talking about your, your mental well being, the ability to de stress and decompress and take away. Um, everybody's tired of technology. Um, it's a great tool for us, but it's also something that you need to step away from and take that time away from. So one of the things that we try to do is offer all sorts of different, like I said, opportunity to engage how you want to. Is it a mindfulness hike by yourself? Is it um, a little time on a bench to just have a snack and listen to the birds? Um, are you doing the wild hikes challenge? How do you want to get that done um, and what works best for you and your, and your physical well-being? It makes you a better person. It makes you better for your family, better for your job, the ability to, to really like use that focus that you need when you're on the job. So that's really important too. It clears your mind um, to make you safer, um, which is one of the reasons why we started working with the Portage County Safety Council um, because it's really a, just a good tool for you and your mental well-being. I'm looking at my notes just to see if I missed anything else. If you Google um, the 120 minutes in nature, there's a lot of studies, a lot of articles that can get you some more information. Um, we can share that those links with you as well uh, if you really want to dig deep into the science behind it. Okay, so all that being you know, said, that was that, that was a lot. <laughs> um, I'm going to no, turn that's, it. That's go creative. ahead, Nick. That, that's really great information. I just wanted to toss in there because you talked a little bit about the health benefits. And, mm -hmm. and as a safety consultant that works with employers across the state of Ohio, we used to focus so far on the nuts and bolts of this is how you guard a machine and, and this is how you keep your employees safe by doing this training. And really, there's so much more to it. We're safety and health professionals. And, and health has become really to the forefront of the work that we do, um, both at the state level, but even independent consultants. And finding ways to get our employees to be healthier reduces those injuries in the workplace. And that's why I think this is a great partnership. Yeah. I think the other big benefit, and maybe we'll talk about this a little bit later too, is I've been doing this uh, presentation on engaging millennials in the workplace. How do we retain them? How do we get them to work? And it's a work-life balance. And if we can find a way to en engage with this nature piece in the workplace, it brings more uh, a different quality, different quantity of people to your workplace. And then giving them volunteerism opportunities um, during working hours to work with organizations like the Portage Park District um, is another way that we're seeing a, a retention of millennials in the workplace, creating that safer work environment too. So I think that this is a big piece for companies to focus in on now. Um, and, and I know the Portage Park District has worked well with us to develop resources to help them start to implement these programs in their workplace. Great. Yep. And then this is where I'll turn it over to Jen to start talking about how do we do that? How are we going to make it more simple for you to, to get, get the motivation to get out there? Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer White and welcome to the Portage Park District website. We decided to work from the website today so that those of you who are listening or watching can get an idea of exactly where to find these spaces for you to get out and get your 120 or more minutes per week out in nature so that you can reap those health benefits. So just to familiarize yourself, first of all, the things to do right in the center there with the cicada, and that's one of our annual cicadas, that's not the big brood Xers. <laughs> so there's the, just a few of those guys that come out every year. So if you click on things to do, it's going to take you to a page that if you scroll down, you can see all of our upcoming programs and events. We are just starting to ease into in person programming in small groups outside. We're doing a, uh, we've been doing a series of birding walks. Uh, the next one's going to be next Saturday at Trail Lake Park. And so you can register for these events. We've been doing a lot of 
online education programs. And the neat thing about that is it's I've gotten lots of feedback from folks who aren't necessarily uh, comfortable or able to get out to a program either uh, just physically or because the time doesn't fit into their schedule. So they can go on to our YouTube site and they can watch any of those recorded programs. And then can if you, if you have the ability to get out to the park physically, then you can go out and apply some of that knowledge that you get at the, at the program. So that's all under things to do. But I want to um, note the top there, it says self-guided mindfulness walk at Trail Lake Park. This is going on. Um, we, this will live on the Trail Lake Park site for a while. You may have started to notice some uh, brown markers with numbers on them popping up at some of our park locations. And Trail Lake Park is one of those where you'll see the markers. Those markers are going to be used for lots of different types of self-guided activity, as well as points of interest during guided walks. Uh, so if your organization, Mike had a great idea earlier, if your organization wants to visit the park and use those markers for your own type of uh, programming, they're already up. There's four of them at Trail Lake Park. There's going to be three to four at most of our, our park properties through the course of this season. And we'll be able to be flexible about how those are used. But currently, there's a recorded and a Printable guided uh, self self guided mindfulness walk that's happening at Trail Lake Park. Um, so this ta uh, taps into that mental health component where you can head out to the park and get some. If you you don't know where to start on getting a little zen in your life, then this is a good way to a good entry point into that. So you can have a little reflection really focusing in on what's happening around you in nature and being present in the moment to calm your mind. And I have found that when you are able to get that center, then you do such a better job at your job when you re-enter the office or, um, or the floor. You know, you get back out there and you're just in a better place and you're more productive and more effective. And the science supports that, that result. So I just wanted to point that out. If you look at the remote education, you can see right there, there's a little remote education button that if you click on remote education, it'll take you to a page that we developed during the pandem pandemic when we were only doing remote work. But this is going to hang out here on our website because we've uh, been fortunate enough to be able to develop some really neat programs that have been used and appreciated by lots of folks. I want to draw your attention today to the outdoor activity resources because what I'm going to do really quickly is go through our park properties and tell you some of the highlights of those properties. So if you scroll down on that page, um, you'll see a few different activities. You'll see the Get Outside 120 and a link. If you click on that uh, Portage County Safety Council, it'll take you right to uh, their website and their Get Outside uh, campaign. You can even, if you like some accountability, you can even log the hours by clicking that button and logging the hours that you're spending out outside. But next you'll see some top things to do at our different parks. And when you click on each one of those, it'll take you directly to the park page. So I thought we would just quickly go through, go through some of those. These are staff favorites. So we pulled the staff uh, early last year. And so what are your, when you think about Towners Woods Park, what are the things that you, either the places that you like to visit there or the activities that you like to do there most? And so we were able to develop one for each one of our, our park properties. So the first is Towner's Woods. So if you click on Towner's Woods, it's gonna take you to the page. Each one of our pages are set up about the same. There's a place to download the specific park map so you know where the heck you're going. <laughs> and there's also some information about the amenities and the trails that are there. So at Towner's Woods, some of the highlights that I would uh, point out, if you have never seen a Hopewell Indian Mound, we do have a Hopewell Mound that's at Port or at Towner's Woods Park. We also have, uh, there's a building that's in the parking lot that's a, it's a historic uh, railroad switch tower. There's very few of them still standing, but it was where uh, railroad workers would manually be able to switch the tracks um, to move trains from one track to the other other. And so you can uh, check that out. You can't go inside unless a staff member is there, but at least you can take a look at the outside and see where those parts um, head out onto the, the railroad. Towners Woods is our oldest park, and it's a great mix of different types of ecosystems. So we have a butterfly trail for meadow. We have some rolling hills, uh, lots of really unique oak forests, um, and it is adjacent to Lake Pippin, which is a glacial kettle lake. And so you can um, walk along the lakeside trail, 
see bald eagles, osprey, um, and really just enjoy that hike. There's also a few bridges at Towner's Woods, and that's one of my favorite things. Anytime I can be in a park with a bridge, I'm in water, I'm happy. So let's head back to the uh, things to do page, and we'll move on to Dick's Park. Hold on one second. I'm going to jump so in Dick's here. Dick's Park is... Uh, yeah. Jennifer, I want to talk about <clears throat> Towner's Woods. It is in the fall time one of the most beautiful places by far in our area. The what is it, Lakeview Trail? I believe it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong with the trail name. Where it yes, goes up Lake Side. Pippin, Lakeside, Lakeside Trail. Side. You go up and you have this incredible view, and everything is orange and just those beautiful autumn colors. And you have the view of the lake, and there's very few trails in the county like that. So if you haven't been to Go, to, go there anytime. Go there right now, but but especially in the fall time, it's incredible when yeah. the leaves start falling and changing colors. There's probably no more beautiful place to go. And even when it's hot outside, it's the coolness from the shade of the trees keeps it nice and cool, and it's just a beautiful place. There are, you know, you have the hike and bike trail that goes through there, so you have real, real some ADA accessible, so any at any level can get through there. But you also have some twists and turns to get a little more elevated right and, and some different things through there so it's yes. a perfect it's a perfect place to go for everyone and there's usually parking available and it does get busy at times but it, it is incredible because you have the woods you have the ada accessible hike and bike paved walking trail you could ride your bike there but then you, there's something for everyone there absolutely yeah towners is a great park and like i said that's the oldest um, park in the system. It was Towners Woods Park was there before Portage Park District was even um, even. Uh, wait, what's the word? <laughs> before we An were entity. even. Uh, was that an entity? Uh, we were yes, we were not even we born yet. It. You can cut yeah. all that out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of so history. Fun. There's a lot of history in these parks, yes, aren't there? Like yes. we were on a trail near Portage Parks. It may have been on the Portage Hike and Bike Trail. My wife and I are walking and there's a waterfall down where the train tracks used to go. You start going into can is it Riverbend? Riverbend Drive or Riverbend Boulevard? Yes. That is so that part of the hike. The, that's the hike, hike and bike trail. And the portion that Portage Park District maintains um ends at in at Riverbend. Yeah, we did it because it was on the Wild Hike Challenge. We, we just saw it on the list, like, hey, let's go check this out. And it's a beautiful drive for us going down Lake Rockwell Road and all that, anyways. Just the drive is gorgeous. And we did it last fall and there's a beautiful waterfall and there's a, an old railroad bridge that you get to look down with falls and different things. It's actually absolutely incredible. So that whole entire area there by Towner's Woods, it's incredible. So check that out for sure. Yeah, and while we're on, while we're talking hike and bike trail, um, the hike and bike trail goes, it's an asphalt paved trail that goes from Ravenna, just east of Ravenna, Peck Road, all the way through Ravenna um, and to, to Towner's Woods and then all the way into Kent. Um, at, at the Riverbend trailhead, that's where the city of Kent's um, portion of the hike and bike trail picks up. And that actually connects to Summit's bike and hike trail. So uh, there's just, wow. a, it's a really nice system of trails and shows how different communities working to de together can create that connectivity throughout the county. So That's yeah, really great. Cool. it's a good one. So I wanna talk about Dick's Park next because this is the time to go. I mean, really the next week or two, we're recording this at the end of April and for the next week or two is gonna be prime trillium time. So if you are familiar with the uh, large flowering trillium, which is our state wildflower, uh, trillium grandiflorum, um, it is uh, in bloom and it's gonna be in its prime here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, to access, to see the biggest display of Trillium, you'll take the farm trail out to this green trail, which is called the Trillium Trail. And there's lots of other wildflowers that are blooming right now too. In fact, we have a self-guided wildflower walk that can be downloaded from our Things to Do page oh, and from right here on the, the site. So Dick's Park is a, a a, a park that has a mixed use and some successional um, areas, some meadows that have been planted with native seed and a uh, flush. In fact, if you look down here at this picture of the field that is just full of uh, blooming wildflowers in late summer. So a mix of 
black eyed Susans and um, blanket flower and milkweed and it transitions into goldenrod. It's just gorgeous. So really nice, a nice walk. While the trails are not ADA accessible, the farm lane is a real solid surface. So you can still go and experience this park um, without a lot of elevation change. And then if you want to go further into the park, uh, you can get some of those stream crossings and bridges and some elevation changes back in the woods. So that's Dix. And then who is up next? Let's do Morgan Park. Uh, Mike has mentioned Morgan Park a couple times on uh, this, this particular episode. And Morgan is neat because it is our largest meadow that you were able to experience. So it's just a beautiful metal loop. It's an ADA limestone based trail um, and it loops around through the meadow. However, if like Mike and I, <laughs> like if you like woods, we have a series of five different trails that uh, loop around through the wet woods of Morgan Park. Um, the reason that it's such a wet woods, and we have lots of these in Portage County, we have five major watersheds that are in the county, which means we're at the headwaters, I don't know, no matter where you are in the county. And so uh, one of the land uh, characteristics of those headwaters areas are lots of wetlands. Um, and they're really important for amphibian breeding um, sites and uh, for nesting sites and for lots of different birds and insects. And so we, um, you can get into those woods and appreciate them. If you're appreciating them this time of year after a rainy day like today, you definitely want to bring some boots. Um, but once you get into the woods, it dries out of it. <laughs> Oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to point out about Morgan is that we do have a pergola um, kind of in the center at the top of the hill. You get 360 degree views of the meadow. Um, there's a pergola, a swing, picnic tables, some other seating, and we have a pollinator garden that was planted by the Portage County Master Gardeners. And Morgan Park. Like Go ahead. Morgan Park may be my wife's favorite park. No, she loves the pergola. I don't know if we ever sat on it more than five, 10 minutes, but one time we were walking out and someone had a guitar. And they were wow. like just jamming. It was like so cool. We come out of the woods, and it was like one of the movies. Like the bard was playing the, the lyre, whatever they called the lyre, yeah. and the thing yeah. coming out it was just epic. It was awesome. So that's that's a beautiful park. It really is. You have picnic tables. You have a place where if you just want to chill and kind of meditate or just hang out, or if you want the wooded part that we like. And I did. Did I tell you the story of my friend that fell there? It was yes. fantastic. And uh, it was it was springtime like this. Just to warn you, it, take a walking stick. If if, but I like the mud, so it was fun. And uh, we we get through, and she slid, and I tried to help her out, and she went all the way in and came out looking like swamp thing. It was fantastic. So, Thanks, but uh, we still laugh about it. So whenever whenever we think about going there, we text her like, "Hey, Steph, you want to go hiking?" And we kind of you know, but it's so lifelong enjoyment and health there. So another memories. Yeah, another quick tip on Morgan, as Jen said, it, it can be wet. And so you want to wear your hiking boots, you want to be prepared. Um, and another note is it is very sunny there and very warm. So on an incredibly warm day, um, that ADA accessible trail um, can be a little bit rough on someone that uh, might be sun sensitive. So just be aware that it you know, takes a minute to get back to those woods and be prepared for that too, if you need to. What I like about it too, is it has a loop. Mm -hmm. roughly like a mile or just under a mile I think if you would go up from the parking lot around the loop and come back mm -hmm. and so if you just sometimes I don't have a lot of time to go to trail lake is 15 minutes from my house about a little mm -hmm. far out so if I can't get to a place like that sometimes I just scoot over to Morgan Park and hit the loop and I think it's like a 20 minute walk or something yeah, it's about Maybe half less. the loop at Trail Lake. So you could do Morgan twice for, for what the loop is at Trail Right. Lake. So it's even nice just to get a quick, I just need a mm -hmm. quick breather and go get outside for a few minutes. Or I've, I've been there for two or three hours trucking the woods and uh, mm -hmm. everything's clearly marked. And if I didn't get lost, no one else will either. So that's a good thing. <laughs> So next up is Seneca Ponds Park. And for those of you who live in Streetsboro, you may or may not have visited this park. Uh, Seneca Ponds Park is like a little wildlife oasis in the middle of an industrial park um, off of uh, Mondial Parkway. And so even with the backdrop of the turnpike and being surrounded by this industrial park, it is beautiful. There's a series of uh, ponds that are there. It's wooded. It's a short loop trail. While it's not ADA accessible, it is an easy 
walk. And uh, the beaver trail is three quarters of a mile and natural surface. You can just uh, walk right around it. It's aptly named because we often see the beavers at work along the trail. So if you don't see the actual beavers, you will see evidence of their hard work. So it's a fun wildlife park. Uh, really, there's picnic tables right when you come in from the parking lot. So if you just want to stop and have lunch, um, park in the parking lot, go short walk up, up into the woods, and it feels like you're in a different, a different world. So I highly recommend a visit. This is one of my, uh, this is one of my favorite parks. Um, we really enjoy this just to do a quick hike. The kids and I we will go out and do this one a couple times a year. Um, and I like that it's so close to the industrial park. Um, I just don't know, if, you know, getting the information out to the businesses. This is a great place that you can go have lunch or even hold your team meetings um, out at picnic tables like this. Just get out in nature. It's right near all those production facilities. It's, it's a great little hidden gem that a lot of people might not be aware of. Yeah, sometimes when I'm in a hurry, Nick, or even if we're shopping in Walmart, I have to go pick a couple things because it's right behind Sheets in that industrial park there. Right. And, and uh, I'm like, you know what? I have an extra 20 minutes. I'm going to jump in. It usually doesn't even take that long to hike it, you know, mm -hmm. maybe 10, 15 minutes to get through there. And one of my favorite parts is where the railroad comes through there. Yeah. And, and the one side of it. And I love the lake and I love all and I love the woods and I love the walkway bridges and all that and there's there's actually two ponds there right so yeah um, beautiful scenery the railroad is just so nostalgia it's such a cool little thing to think in, in the midst of all this industrial park there's like a little place i can find the peace and the nature um to kind of reset and release some stress there yeah, it's great. And we do offer catch and release fishing. Um, and you can bring your, you have to hand carry it. There's no, um, there's no dock or anything, but you can bring your kayak um, and, and you know, pop into the, the pond. And it's, it's a beautiful little spot. I've kayaked there. I made it work. We did it. Mm -hmm. So Shaw Woods, if I had to pick a personal favorite park, this would be my favorite. Um, Again, I'm a water girl, and so I, yeah. <laughs> don't tell anybody else. Actually, don't tell people that we love Shaw Woods. We don't want others to know. You know, it's my favorite, especially, oh, yeah, and I'm glad you said it, because I need to get down there before, while the spring is still coming, before it gets yes. too warm, because yeah. if you're listening to this, get down right now, because the rain fills up the creek there, and, and Jen is obviously going to tell you more scientifically the names oh, of no, all no. that stuff and what it is. But it's amazing. I, mean, I love it. You know, there's you go. There's so many things to offer there, but I love water and walking along streams and and half the trail almost seems like it's like that. So, yeah, it's fabulous. It's really a great park. It's a little bit of a hike to get back to the water part. So um, not a not a big hike, but you go through the a section of the the Buckeye Trail. There's a very primitive campsite that you can reserve uh, and uh, but boy, the Meander Trail is just a special kind of place. And there's two of those streams that Mike was referring to. We have an unnamed tributary to the West Branch of the Mahoning River. And so the Mahoning River, that's the same segment of stream that runs into West Branch State Park, you know, that's dammed up before it heads on its way to the Ohio River. And the Meander Trail not only crosses over and runs aside to that headwater stream, but then it also runs right next to the uh, the, Mahoney, the West Branch of the Mahoning River. And you can even see the spot that that same headwater stream meanders around and enters the West Branch of the Mahoning. And it's just so beautiful. We did some stream sampling of the headwaters, that headwater stream when I first started at the park district and high, high marks in terms of water quality and the species that it supports. So just a really high quality stream and it's beautiful. Um, also, this is a, a park that you wanna wear some boots in the spring because just by the nature of the, um, of the terrain, some of those lower areas, especially along the meander trail do get a little bit muddy, uh, but it is so worth it. It's just a beauty. And there's big overlooks over the ravine. There's some um, remnants of a, 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 a dam that's, that was there. I mean, it is just, it's just beautiful. So please get out and enjoy Shaw Woods. One note about Shaw Woods, um, and maybe after this podcast, we'll end up, you know, having loads and loads of people that are there, but this is our least utilized park. Really? Um, it's a little bit off the be beaten path. Uh, it's not right on a main road. It's on um, Beery Road, which is um, 
off of uh, off of Beechwood, which is off of State Route 88. So the other side of Beery Road, across the street from Shaw Woods, just to orient our listeners, kind is, of in the Maplewood Career Center area is how I yes, tell right in that area. Yeah. Yes, we just passed Peck Road, uh, mm-hmm. but the Ravenna Arsenal now. Camp Garfield, uh, James A. Garfield is directly across the street. So a beautiful area. And uh, I've been shocked at how few cars I see even during the pandemic. All of our other parks have been full and you know being used. And this one, if you want a nice respite and really want to connect with nature and take a, a seat next to the, the river, this is the place for you. There's a beautiful... And just a quick... Go ahead, Andrew. I'm sorry. I was just going to add a quick note that there's also equestrian trail there. Um, we just have a couple locations that you can do that for those folks that that are interested in those types of trails. You can do that at Shaw Woods. Yeah. I got a special a really request. Nice parking lot. Yeah, I got a special request for Shaw yeah. Woods. <laughs> I like how I crash podcasts and throw, but I like right. to see that they're off the back when you're in the woods. And I have no idea what the trail names are. I, I can't remember, but I absolutely love this part of it. There's like a towpath or oil well drive kind of thing mm-hmm. off the back in. That part of the river, when you walk to the end of that, it's just, it's so cool, but it's yeah. really kind of hard to walk back because it's probably not made like to walk back there. But just saying, if you guys think yeah. you need a little extra money, a nice little, little outlook spot that would be cleaned up a little deck out there. So I'm sure Andrea I'm can, just uh, <laughs> point to it on the map here where Mike is referring to, as you see that. It's amazing. Shape, that diagonal line there. That's an, that is a utility line. So it's cleared and super sunny. The rest of the park is, is wooded. Um, but the, um, the sugar, the sugar bush trail, which is in red loops around there. And so my guess is Mike, you took a left turn off the trail and traversed down to the river. <laughs> I was that off trail. I broke the rules and didn't even know it. So what we really need is a sign that says, this Private. is where the park ends. You're not on park property anymore. Oh, I was like, oh, shoot. No, I was he was still on park property, at least. He, he was people I was on park, all right. Kind of start going down that road, and there's there's a point where you aren't on park property anymore. But oh, because it, it, looks, right. it looks like it it's just flows right spot. in it. Yeah. yeah. Down by the river, you are. You are. Yeah. Still so you're down property, here. Not on the trail. If you turn this way, then you're going off park property. <laughs> All right. I'll so get a rest. Really important. That's that's a, that's an important note. Pay attention to the map. <laughs> if your park ranger catches me, I'm just going to tell him I was looking for my van down by the river. That's all. Yeah. We'll let him know to keep I an eye out. My name is Mick you. Foley. <laughs> Motivational speaker. <laughs> Nick, have you been to Shaw Woods yet? Yeah, no, we, we visited them all last year as, as part of this uh, hiking spree we did. We did uh, the hiking here in Portage and Summit. Um, and there's just, there's so many great little hidden gems people don't know about, but the website was helpful to find these locations and just go out and explore them. It was just, uh, it was a weekend getaway for us every weekend just to, to break up, uh, you know, walking around the neighborhood. Yeah, I think Jen's right. It's probably because it's not a main road and you can't see the sign or anything. It's, it's kind of back off near some houses but it, if you're listening to this you have to go check it out it's one of my favorite places this year's a great year to do it the wild hikes challenge is 30 miles or 30 hikes so in order to get those you could go uh, we have a little over 34 miles of trail in all of our parks so the challenge would be just to do them all so there you go you've explored everything and then you can pick your own favorite yep. shaw woods to me was just fun like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I walked like almost three miles there. I could yeah. be wrong, but it, we did a bunch of trails all in the same day and it, it didn't feel like it. Like when yeah. I sat down at home later, it did, but <laughs> out of shape, Mike did. But, uh, <laughs> but look, when we we're walking there, I felt like a kid again. I felt like, Hey, we're, we're going on this like rocky path up the hill. It was just fun. It felt like I was really outside. Uh, you know what I mean? Sometimes you get the trail. It's like, Oh, it's cool. But like, it really felt like we're having a blast like we're exploring some kind of land that we've never been to it's what it felt like to me so that's cool if you're looking for that little bit of edge out in the middle of nowhere because you've probably never been there if you haven't been there so it just seems like you're in a whole another state or something so pretty cool very we're going to skip over the hike and bike trail because we've already visited that page but the we have two other mm-hmm. hike and bike trails these would be in and out trails um no loops at these and one is the headwaters trail which connects the village of garrettsville to the village of manaway and our next park project actually involves extending that western edge um on the other side of manaway up to mennonite road so it's bringing it up to road level so those road bicyclists 
um, you'll be able to go directly from the road to the the trail and this is a it's called the headwaters because you, around lime ridge road you actually cross over the major watershed break i get geeked out and excited about this major watershed break you go from the lake erie watershed into the ohio river watshed big deal if anybody's keeping note on amount of times that jen has mentioned watershed <laughs> we're up to two and i'd say maybe almost a three. Oh, it's so good it's so, we're so i have no good. idea what she's talking about but i'm gonna be excited just hearing it we can like, do a whole i don't know the difference water. between the two like another podcast. yeah <laughs> it's where the water what body of water the the land drains to so if you're a little water droplet and you land on the uh lake erie side of Lime Ridge Road. So you see that dotted line through the center? Yeah. If you land to the left of the dotted line, you're going to eventually find your way to Lake Erie. If you're a little water droplet that lands to the right of the dotted line, you're going to eventually flow to the Ohio River and then to the Mississippi River and all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. How cool and this, is that? And this is cool because this is how Portage County got its name, right? We were the yes. portage between the two rivers that First Nations people would take the canoes and they call it the Portage Trail. And it was involved Akron and different stuff, but they had to pick up their canoes and portage them into the other, was it Tuscarawas? I could be, the Cuyahoga in the north of Tuscarawas, but you can make your way all the way to the Mississippi Delta by coming through the area, right? And, but they had a portage through Portage County. So just a little bit of history for the county, really cool. Yep, portaging from one watershed to the other, pretty impressive. So, so that's the Headwaters Trail. Um, we're gonna, let's go, <laughs> over to the Berlin Lake Trail because I'm gonna on a I have a short little list of um, trails to show you momentarily. This is the Berlin Lake Trail. Um, it's only 2.2 miles from end to end connecting Route 224 to State Route 14. And there's a bridge that's marked with those three squares there that overlooks Berlin Lake Reservoir. And it's beautiful. Um, it's also one of the county top hotspots for birding because you have lots of different mixes of environments and habitats that support lots of different birds. Um, so if you love birds, you definitely want to visit this particular trail. And it's, also, it's we're, we're only, we're number two, right, Jen? I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I, yes. I'm all about competition. We're <laughs> currently number two and West Branch is number one and we're not okay with that. So we not need all. all the birders to get over there. Um, Jen's got a little list. We're going to, at some point, we're going to promote that list. Um, but we need to see those birds because we want to be number one. We are one away. We were holding <laughs> the top spot for a really long time. And then during the pandemic, some of the, you know, really rare birds decided to visit West Branch and now they're ahead of us. <laughs> so we're um, looking for that Eastern screech owl at, at Berlin Lake. They're everywhere. So we know that they're there. They just haven't been documented. <laughs> yeah. But you know what West Branch don't have? West Branch don't have Alberts. That's a big deal, especially big how deal. he just how he randomly seems to jump out of the woods in random parts of the county. Yeah. He never goes to West Branch. I don't know why, yeah. but 198 species at Berlin Lake. Well, and Albert, Albert. we're at two, right? It's true. <laughs> hey, Albert could be, put us over the edge. This is there great. You go. For those of you that don't know, Albert is their mascot. He's a big woolly owl, <laughs> big hairy mascot. So he's he's cool. He's yeah, one of a kind. Buddy. Yeah. He's up the there last... with McGruff, the crime dog, and uh, Smokey <laughs> Bear. They all hang out on the island of Misfit Pandas. That's or something. true. That's 100% true. The last park that I want to highlight is our newest park. And so when we did this, uh, when we were on your podcast, Mike, um, gosh, it's been almost two years ago now. We um, were just getting, you know, it was in the planning stages and everybody was asking, when is it going to open? When is it going to open? And it's open. So Trail Lake Park opened in November of last year and it's just a gem. I mean, we have two different trails that loop around the lake. One is a partially a natural surface trail. The other is our Osprey Loop that is an asphalt paved ADA grade uh, trail. And it's, um, we have a handicap accessible kayak launch, a fishing dock, um, just a beautiful, beautiful park. And have you, have you been out to visit it, Mike? Has it, has it replaced the other oh, lake? Oh, like, like a thousand times. It hasn't replaced the other lake, just because the other, the other lake's like half the distance. Us. Trail Lake Very takes about 15 minutes for me to drive to, so I don't get there as often as I like, but I do. And um, I'm trying to get in shape so I can get a kayak. You know that story. I'm not going to get into it. Um, but you, you had this amazing kayak launch I've never seen before. I'm sure someone else has one out there, but 
You want to explain that a little bit? It just it, it makes easy kayaking easy for a fat guy like me. I, I think I would be because I would be my biggest thing with kayaking <laughs> is I'd probably fall off the dock trying to get in the stupid thing. And so you want to explain that a little bit? I don't know if you got a close up on there you could look into. Yeah, this is as close as I, I they don't zoom in when you click on them. Um, so I'll explain a little bit. So this is the pier. Um, there's a little bit of a carry. I Again, a pro tip that you want to know before you go. If you don't have wheels for your kayak um, or a buddy with you, um, it's a bit of a carry um, for a single person to, to, to haul their kayak down to the water. Um, but as long as you come prepared, it's it's a one you want to get on that water it's beautiful so much to see um, so when you get down to the water you come down this pier and then this is the floating kayak launch um, we've seen canoes go off here uh, we just actually put in a little launch point over here for those folks that don't want to use um, the kayak launch but what this is right here um, you can't see them real well but there's some bars here and then there's rollers so once you get your kayak on here um, there's also a bench seat, so it's accessible. So folks that have mobility issues can sit on this bench, scooch into their kayak, and then use their arms to pull on the rollers to get into the water. And then the same thing on the way out. You're going to use your arms to pull your boat up into this so launch cool. and get out. Um, I actually saw one up in Michigan and thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, our director, Chris, had seen one somewhere else. Uh, I think in like Southern Ohio. So they're around, but I think um, as far as Portage County is concerned, I'm not sure that anyone else in Portage County has this particular launch. Um, so we're really happy to have it and, and let folks be able to use this and kind of see how these things can work for them. And you don't have to be, you know, immobile to use it. You know, you don't have to be in a wheelchair. Um, you, you mentioned Mike, just, just wanting that little extra help. I took my dad out kayaking. Um, and he was a little unstable when we came back and I would have loved to have this to help me help him so that we can go together because I can't lift him. <laughs> so it's a really nice tool to be able to have this um, to just allow more people on the water. Um, so we're really excited about it. I found my favorite part of this park. It's in the top left of your pictures there. That's looking at from across the lake. But mm -hmm. see where those two big pine trees are? Mm -hmm. I know it may be hard to see without zooming in. So we probably can't zoom in on it. But uh, the trail goes right up there. And in the fall, mm -hmm. it was covered in leaves. So you couldn't see exactly where the trail was. But it kind of guides you right there. It, it is yeah. cut open a little bit. Yeah. But up there, is that the other side of it? Yeah, the so this is, the, this is the aerial view, but it'd be right about here. So you'd be looking across to – here's the parking lot on this end. Yes, See, it's halfway around and you go up and there's like three or four large, fully mature like pine trees and there's other small ones growing. But you go up there and just it is incredible because it's shaded. There's some um, smaller baby pine trees growing right there as you walk over it. But the view of the lake in the summer when the sun hits the lake, looking from um, above on the hill down into the lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Like I could just spend if there was a bench there or an outlook, I could spend hours just just enjoying the beauty of it in, in a quiet time. It's like, to me, the perfect place. It's probably my single most um, favorite place that I could identify of any Portage Park or any state park in the county, um, yeah, of, of anyone, any city park. It's just the coolest little place for me. And uh, yeah, if you go there, check it out. I, I shouldn't tell people because it's like my spot. You know what I mean? They go up there, know. like, no, put a sign up there, Mike's spot. They already know about it. Visited. I'm not the only one. Dang it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in November, when we opened, uh, we had now the, the karma and the weather, you know, whatever shined upon us. Mother Nature was our friend. And in November, when we opened, it was 70 degrees all weekend. It was mm -hmm. so beautiful. Um, and we had 8,000 people come through in November of last year. And then another, I think it was roughly 5,000 in December. Um, so wow. the, the numbers continue to, to show us how wonderful this park is and, and what a gem it is to add um, to the park district. So, you know, it's getting, it's the star child right now. It's kind of the favorite, um, but that's why we talk about all the other parks too, because Shaw Woods is still a huge favorite and Towners will always, you know, have a dear spot in our hearts as well. So we want to make sure everybody gets to all the parks. 
And there's a lot of non-Portage County people that come there. I, yeah. I noticed a lot of Lexus and BMW. You don't see too many of those around our parts too much. Uh, but oh but you can kind of tell there's probably people from Hudson, Stowe, Twinsburg that come out probably because the location of it's really close to Hudson. Uh, yeah. but, it, but it's really cool the, the different types of people that you see at the different parks and particularly this one. And I tell you, I, was it the fall? I think it was the fall, yeah, because we're heading into spring now. There was a couple of moments in the fall where the breeze was just right. When I head off the parking lot, um, I usually walk for some reason counterclockwise, but I went clockwise this time. I took a left right off the parking lot, went mm-hmm. down, and there's it goes down a little bit, like right off the bat, and you go around, and there's this just wooded area of these tall pine trees. Mm-hmm. And if I'm walking just for exercise, a lot of times I don't pay attention as much as I probably should. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I just kind of rush it to get a workout in, you know. But I, I remember multiple times this fall when it was a little warmer of smelling like this this pine breeze hmm. coming off the trees. I don't know if you've experienced that there. Yes. Um, I, I didn't I don't do it every time I go there, but it must have just been the wind was right. And I was like, what is that? And it was like this really mild, fresh pine. Now some people think of pine salt and they're like, I can't handle that, you know, but it wasn't like that. It was like this natural fresh just fragrance coming from the back you know just slightly mild in the background and it was i just had to stop and breathe it was just so incredible i i, I never had that experience with like pine trees growing up you know running around the woods growing up on a micro farm in portage county doing all kinds of stuff i never had that experience so just the way the wind came off it so if you go to trail lake and you want to exercise hit the trail that's fine but make sure you stop and just kind of enjoy some of the pieces of it. You're going to just miss out on some of the opportunities to really take it all in. And we One do more. Have, go ahead. And we do okay. have some new benches that have been installed uh, recently at, at Trail Lake Park, as well as some additional picnic mm-hmm. tables that have been added. So there's lots of places now along the trail that you can stop and take that rest. And those pine trees you were talking about are also home to a number of different owl species. So you'll hear and see owls at the park great horned owls, barred owls, eastern screech owls. Uh, so if you, if you love owls, there's a good chance that you'll be able to see or hear them there. And one more item of note in, um, in that same category is there, there are bald eagles that frequent that park quite often. Um, I have yet to see an owl and I've been there multiple times and they refuse to come out for me. However, I have seen the eagles more than once. Um, so take a moment, sit on the bench, and, and just be quiet and, and look, and, and you will certainly see something enjoyable. I almost broke out some pet nova right there. <laughs> but I decided that would be good for any of us. That's and you'd have to spend 120 minutes outside just to recover. So <laughs> I'll just keep, there is my favorite outlook there outside of that, right before, right by that mountain peak where the pine trees are, where it comes off the hill and you guys, you put a picnic table there, I believe, or a bench, or maybe both. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think I've been there since you put up your um, numbers. I can't remember what you said, the, the mindfulness numbers. Yes. But th- that spot right there, I know you know what I'm talking because it's amazing. Yes. It's like you can see the view and it's right off the bottom of the hill and the view of the lake. And again, when the sunlight hits it, it's just amazing. I love stopping there and just taking that in. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. Andrea just navigated to this, uh, our main parks and maps page. And I did a program for the Portage County Senior Center a couple weeks ago. And they were looking for, even though we have, what, 57%, correct, Andrea? 57% of our, yep. our, our park trails are accessible trails. Isn't that exciting? That is. Um, so we have all these accessible trails, but they were looking for short walks. So we developed a, a list of just some ideas of some places that you can go. So if you click on that download now button, um, it'll bring up a, uh, a PDF well, that shows the uh, some, some examples of um, short little walks. So the Headwaters Trail, I won't go through each of these individually, but the Headwaters Trail, if you want to see the waterfall, it's less than a thousand feet from the um, the parking area. Um, as that is road. a beautiful, that is a yes. beautiful, not to drag yes. it out, that Asbury Road, I saw it on the Wild Hike Challenge, <laughs> and I'm like, I've been Headwaters Trail, I'm not impressed. That was me in the inside voice. But I always went from the Garrettsville end. When I went yeah. to Asbury Road, my wife and I, we went two or three times at least, if not more, Last year, we used to take our son in the stroller and, and go down there. It's easy. It's real wide. It was safe to social distance back then. And uh, the, the waterfalls, 
if you make a right, if you park at Asbury and go to, that would be the east, right? You head right. east, it's right there. It's really easy yeah. to find. And some of the best in the summertime of going out there, like an evening or early evening right after work was perfect because I'm walking back there and some people have their houses kind of close to the trail. And mm -hmm. I, I thought like, man, that'd be kind of cool to live there, but then it'd be kind of annoying. And I'm walking, but then I hear like this dude jamming tunes someone's barbecuing i'm like this whole walk just got more enjoyable and yeah. and see the, the the hills the rocks and where the water kind of cycles down it's a that's a real beautiful place to walk awesome yeah we I, I love it so if you scroll down through here we've got a list of these are the ones that are those first that first section are the ones that are accessible surfaces the other ones down at the bottom are really short walks but on natural surfaces so there's a couple of little areas that are really really pretty and so if you're just looking for you know some short nice walks to take um, at our park properties this will give you a jumping off point so do you guys have any other questions or anything else before we wrap things up? I want you guys to share about your podcast because I did have one of the podcasts on there in particular I really enjoyed. No, it wasn't the one I was on. It was the one about bears. Oh, yes. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. I was, <laughs> I was like, hey, check this out. This is so cool. It was, we had a bear in our neighborhood several years ago, and everyone's kind of like, what do you do? Should we get all the kids inside? And then everyone's out with their camera. I was trying to take a picture of it. And uh, – real fun stuff but yeah pitch your podcast because the mindfulness stuff that you mentioned in the beginning is all on there there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff on your podcast and i know um so if you're listening to this go check that out andrew what's how do you find your podcast um so we're on almost every platform at this point you should be able to search portage park district and find us it's called education on the go um, so we're on Spotify, we're on Apple, uh, we originate from Anchor, um, but we're in, we're in, we're everywhere. Um, but I'm also going to, as Jen talks about some of the topics, I'm going to navigate to the page on our website where you can kind of get started with that podcast as well. So I'll click around and do that. And Jen can, can pitch some of the topics and what we're going to be doing this year with it. Sounds great. So Mike, I'm so glad you brought the podcast up because I wasn't even going to talk about that today. And I'm excited because we have just a few episodes that are out there now from last year and at the beginning of this year, but we are going to be doing these little nature nuggets, um, real short little bits about different uh, different topics and different species and different things to see at the park. And so be looking for some of those um, as well as some of our guest speakers like Jamie Emmerich, who we had on to do the, the bears. Uh, the bear necessities is the episode that you're you're referring to. And uh, we also have a, a guided hike. Andrew did a nice job on uh, one about the Hopewell Mound. So if you want to go visit that at Towners Woods Park, you can listen to the podcast episode to walk along and learn uh, learn about the history of that particular spot, uh, some information on trail safety. Um, the mindfulness hike is is on there. There's frog calls. So even though we're- I couldn't do that one. I couldn't do that one, oh, to be honest with you. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool, but after a couple like- I was like, I'm out. I'm out. I can't do it. You can annoy your friends with it. <laughs> I need to wake my wife up in the middle of the night with that one time. Just- turn my sound bar all the way up like yeah. like you what are you doing i'm doing a mating call i feel like your wife is a little bit of a saint like i i feel like <laughs> she's not she's not we torment each yeah. other in fun all the time that's good she gives no. me wedgies when no one's looking it's terrible, terrible. <laughs> I know, a little bully, I know actually. not many people still have CD players in their car, but when my husband and I were dating um, early on, um, so he knew what he was getting into here, I had, I was, I was teaching myself and reminding myself about the different frog calls. And so I had the Department of Natural Resources frog <laughs> call CD and it was on high. And <laughs> he gets did into he, the Did car, he puff his jaws out and stick his arms up? was like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Nothing like nothing like starting up the car and hearing, you know, hearing the, the American Toad song. I'm like, do you know which one this is? You know what this means? I have no idea. I don't speak frog. <laughs> You know, the nice thing about the, the Hopewell Mound, uh, Mike, you mentioned most people don't know that there, there is a mound um, at Towner's Woods um, or the quickest way to get to it. So um, a little behind the scenes for you is I actually wore the GoPro on my forehead 
<laughs> to do this. Um, but I just walked it. I, I slowly walked it, kind of looked at some things, um, and then the, did the audio when I came back. Um, but what's helpful is we get a lot of people, um, like classrooms, you know, pre social distancing. I'm sure that's going to start happening again. Uh, but teachers looking for um, little field trips that they can do with their kids. Um, and it just makes it easier. Once again, it just makes it more simple. I don't have to find the info, I can just pull this up. Um, watch that real quick, get a little bit of information or listen to it in my earbud um, while I'm doing the walk. Uh, and it just makes it simple. I like the walk that you guys do and you could hear the steps. Like when mm -hmm. the audio picks it up to me, it just it paints just a beautiful picture with the podcast, which obviously you don't get any visuals with it, but it just kind of takes you there. You know, I know some people do watch your videos on YouTube and it's great, but the sound that comes from, you could hear the birds in the background, the crunching of the trail and, to me, I just love it. Just makes it more wholesome, I guess. So thank you for putting them out, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You're welcome. Thank you for Keep listening. Keep up the good work. Nick, did you have any questions for him before we get out of here? No, I just, I think this is a great uh, video we did today and podcast. Um, there's just so many great resources here in Portage County. And, and I know for Mike and I, this has been a, a personal mission of ours is to just highlight all the great things in Portage County. Uh, before we started, when we started with Safety Council, um, we said to each other, you know, we need to change the stigma of it's just Portage County to Portage County has so much to offer and creating partnerships with the Portage Park District and other organizations is helping us elevate um, all the great things that are here, uh, not only for Portage, but all the great safety things um, that we can do and health things we can do for our employees here in Portage County. So thank you for all your hard work that you do. Um, all the activities you put together, there's just so much stuff um, that employers and employees can, can do uh, here in the county. All right, so Andrew and Jennifer, Nick, thanks for joining us today. It was awesome as usual. And everybody out there listening, go check out Portage Parks. They're beautiful, life-changing. All right, everybody out there, be safe. Thank you.